up guys welcome back to AC Designs Garage and today I got a super cool tool for you guys it's gonna be a exhaust tubing marker layout tool if you're using these building your own exhaust tubing you need one of these and I'm gonna show you how to make it out of scrap wood super easy and basically all it does is helps you get the angle of the dangle so let's get at it all right let me show you what we work with guys sorry for the the air running but let me show you real quick what the temperature air's been running here for about an hour it's bearable but we are approaching a hondo real quick and it is humid as all get out but anyways i'm gonna show you what we're building um if you ever fooled with these this is the kit i got from speedway motors one of their uh, universal truck hot rod kit comes with like 45s this is two and a half inch that's why i'm gonna run on patches over here it comes with these 180 degree but one thing about these is you got to be careful when you cut 180 and that's what this tool is for basically we're going to have a center line right here it's going to have a piece that's two and a half inch and it'll do this and we can put a protractor on it and it'll give you perfectly square cuts all the way around because if you've ever tried to cut anything on a radius like this if you don't get it perfectly square to that section of pipe right there it's going to be oval it's not going to be round so if you try to cut this and you're off a little bit and then you try to butt it to something else, ain't gonna work. So what we got here is some 5 8 inch MDF. I think it come off of that belt sander or something maybe the motor was bolted down to I'm gonna use. It's a couple feet long or so. Uh, 21 and a half inches long by, looks like that's about 11 and 5 16 uh, Probably not gonna use all this. I went online and found some different drawings and stuff. What you need is basically, like this is the big old tape, it's five inches, so I'm gonna call that a five inch radius, I guess is what this is. But it fits that perfectly. And this is what, we're, we're about to build a puck like this, but we're gonna build it out of the scrap down here. And it'll have a, basically like a piece of all thread or a bolt sticking up through it. And we'll just make this flat piece that goes around it and it'll just pivot right here. And uh, you can lay your protractor out and do your 22 and a half, 45, whatever you wanna do on it. And then you just spin it around like that and take your marker and it gives you a perfect mark around it. So we're gonna try that. So I'm gonna get down here on the bottom. First off, like you do anything, we're gonna find center of this, pop us the center line of it. And then we're gonna cut us a, get the old jigsaw and cut us a five inch round puck with a three eighths hole in the middle. So let's get to that. Got us a dead center mark all the way up through there. Now we're gonna figure out how far down we need to come. So I'm just gonna lay the, Stand up here and I'm gonna leave we'll do three inches. I got enough. It's scrap, it's no rhyme or reason on the size of this. So I'm gonna come down and mark three inches around the top, make this mark across. That's where the top of our tube is going to be. So it rests right here. Get a little square to put on there. Put my square up on the line so I know when it's all the way up there. All right, that looks pretty good there. It's 10 and an eighth. So. Five and a sixteenth should be center, so I'm just gonna move this whole thing over five and a sixteenth. That's pretty close. It don't really matter. I guess this right here'd be an easy way to do it. We'll just square this thing up on the line. It's supposed to be there. We'll measure seven and a half. Seven and a half. So that should be us right there. I'm gonna draw just a little line right here just to So I got something to go off of here. Oh, 
lot of these lines I'll probably sand off after I get this uh, halfway situated. Two and a half. Right there is where our hole will be drilled there. And uh I'm gonna come down here on this scrap. You can see where the end of our tube is, so I'm gonna come down to about right. Get in there and scrap of that. Yeah. We'll come off right off the top of these holes and get rid of these at five inches. This is where we'll cut it off. It's gonna make one out of metal, but I really don't need to make it out of metal and heavy duty and all that stuff because it's just a marking utensil. It's really not, whoa, we're gonna knock her off the floor. It's really not gonna be for cutting or anything. It's basically gonna lay it out and make you marks and you'll go cut on your bandsaw or your chop saw or cut off wheel or whatever y'all wanna do. This here don't really matter. We're just gonna make a round cut here. There you go. Keep moving this thing around. Let's see if I can hold it a little better. This just luckily worked out to be this little tape here worked out pretty good for the radius on it. Alright, so we're gonna cut that out with the jigsaw. I guess I could have put me a piece of a nail in here with a string on it down a circle. That works too. Find half of this. Which is two and a half. I like to go a couple different places around here and mark the two and a half so we can get a hundred percent center. Half. Two and a half. Don't pay attention to this little mark here because I just laid it up there. So here we go. Go get my little jigsaw and whack her out. Halfway around, we'll go straighten it up on the belt sander. Now, we'll move my line up just a hair because the disc got into it. These lines ain't too crucial. I'm just going to bring it just a skosh above. I guess I could measure it. What that ended up being? Five and eight. Close snuff, not as dusty. Ooh, that was nice. What? Hold it tight. That's close enough. We're just gonna hang it on the wall anyhow. So basically, I'm gonna go up here and clean this up on the belt sand real quick. But this will go right here. And see, it'll even work on the 45s. So basically all this does is this, I guess, just indicates this tube here. We'll mount this on here and it'll have the little... I'll take this right here off and run out there. We'll just bore a hole straight through it. So let's go get her a little more rounded up and uh, we'll get this two holes bored in here and then a small thread sticking up through there.
close enough. All right, I had to do one little modification. I just took some scrap and just doubled it up. You can see it's not perfectly round, but I just doubled it up to get it up high enough. And I didn't think about it when I first started doing this, but you at least want this radius here to the center of like the middle of your tube here. So that's where we're at now. We're pretty close to the center. We got it close and we'll take the little nail gun we got, just pop, 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 pop a couple holes in it. We'll go in right here and uh, just take a three eighths or whatever. I think that's three eighths. Uh, one I got, I was gonna do it on the table, the welding table, but I was like, let's make something hang on the wall, get that out of the way. Anywho, we're gonna pop a three eighths hole all the way through it from the bottom side and uh, make my little flag thing it traces on here and uh, we'll be done. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, make sure you drop down in the comments below how you guys would do it any different. I mean, it's, it's all on how all y'all guys look at this and perceive it and see how you like it and whatever works best for you, so. It's looking pretty good. We can just drill a hole in it and hang it on the wall somewhere when we get ready to use it. What I'm using today is just the old Harbor Freight Central Pneumatic Brad Nail or whatever. I got these little staples. The ones I got ain't long enough. So we're gonna shoot them. They're long enough to go through these two pieces, but I'm gonna come in from the bottom side too, just to hold it, so. And, uh, okay. Also, I wanna give a shout out to my buddy Phil from House of Chopped. He's one of the first ones I saw do the homemade ones, so go check his Instagram out at House of Chopped. And uh, also, he's got a YouTube channel. Super cool guy, so check him out, so. Come up from the old bottom. I ain't fastened dudes out here around here with the nail guns on the roof. These cats are good at it. I think that's enough. I'm gonna hit them down. I ain't got a air pressure on them. All right. Let's take a shake. Let's get us a 3H drill bit and pop right down the middle. All right, we've got our 3H drill. That's why I stapled it. You really don't need staples, but it just helps hold everything together more better. We'll try to keep this as square as we can. Good to me. Might waller us out on the bottom where the head of that uh that old carriage bolt will go up in there a little bit. Get you one of them Christmas tree bits or I call this a chamfer bit, it kind of does counter sinking and stuff. Maybe that on the top just to clean it up. Alright. Need a bigger table. Alright, we're gonna chant for a little bit more. Get a good wallered out. Let's see if we can get this old carriage bolt knocked down in there. So we're gonna throw us a washer on there. Put a regular old nut on there we can tighten up. And then we'll make our little, what I call the flag up here that holds off of it. And it'll just drop on it and swing around there. Let's get our... Look at there, that's already indicating that nicely. Get it leveled up. All right, guys, we got our little pin through. Now, I'll show you this. This is a little different design, having this puck in here. The one thing I like about the puck being in here is it'll, you know, it'll always lock the piece in or give you a spot to lock it into. And if, even if you want to, you can come down here and put some little things to square it up to get 90. But a lot of the, a lot of the other designs, it's just a straight piece with this little, what I call a sweeper. Uh, this is just my rough one. I'm going to show you guys how to make this. I, I was going to just go ahead and make it and start filming and stuff, but I figured some of you guys may want to see how to lay this out to make it. And this is a little big. But basically what we're going to do, we're going to take a couple 3 8 nuts and we'll file the threads out where they'll slide on this thread and we're going to make this out of sheet metal, like an 18 or 16 gauge would be better where it don't bend. But this is basically what it does. It'll uh, weld to the nuts so it'll kind of just sweep around. 
like that. And what it does is it gives you basically a parallel to where you can come in here and mark. You can move around. By using this puck, the only thing you lose out on is like the bottom three quarter is not going to mark. But I mean, it's, you'll be able to mark all the way around to this point. So, you know, that's where you're going to do. If you want to build it like this and just don't put the puck, you know, that you're fine to do that too. But I'm going to make a little bit tighter and final version of this that we're going to use. And I just use old cheap poster board from the dollar store and uh what we're going to do first is we're going to measure from the nut to right here to the inside of the bend see what we be got in here we go this way all right that is right at two and a quarter to the nut i think i'm gonna I'll go ahead and take it to the front of the the front of this uh, all thread instead of the the nut there, and we we can notch for it. So we're two and three eighths in, so that's going to be this point. So basically, what I'm trying to get the measurement for is is this piece, and we're just going to use a piece of the two and a half inch tube. So I'm going to come up here, and make a mark at two and three eighths, and uh, I'll show you how we make our circle here. Our two and three eighths and then our half moon circle well we'll lay the tube all the way up here and then cut up to it but that's going to be where the outside edge of our tube is so let me get this out of the way basically we're not going to take the swedge in because it's a little bigger we're going to take this end right here and line your tubing up right to the bottom and we're just going to kind of side it down through there to see if that's about the same. That's pretty close. And we'll just trace around the tubing. And we're not going to cut. I have noticed you can't cut this way up here, but I'm going to try to keep it around to about right here to do my cut, my relief to where it'll hold a little tighter to the tube. Gets a little bit more better. But yeah. That's what we got. So I'm gonna come in here, do a little arch and craft. So let's cut the circle out first. I'm gonna cut to the inside of it so it's, it can be a little tight where we can kind of tune her in a little bit. My circle cutting abilities ain't the greatest. I don't have a two and a half inch hole saw, so I think I'm going to use a two when I cut this and we'll just creep our way up to it. All right, we're going to snip it here and snip it here. Now what we're going to have to do is There we go, we take a check that real quick. So that's that's pretty good to it right there. So what we're gonna do now is we basically need to take this off level with the puck. Like I said, you don't have to do the puck. The puck just indicates it really easy for me. Like I said, it may work better the other way. I'll measure out real quick what that is. That's an inch and a quarter. So I'm gonna come up an inch and a quarter here. And we're just going to lock that thing off. So now, pretty close right there, ain't it? So it's just going to spunt around like that. Get all the stuff off. Cut that notch out for the nut right there. It's just a little arts and crafts, about all it is. We'll get that. See how we still got a little gap, but that'll that'll give it room enough around here to spin around. Cut that up a little higher. Yes. 
should work and you can you can come on the puck here. I'm going to erase this line here because it's not centered. Now this line down the middle here, that's centered down the board. We're going to make that 90. You can just get you a little protractor or whatever they call these things here. And this one here sits on almost on the center line radius of the tube. You can get your 90 and your 45 and stuff like that, 22 and a half. Just whatever you need and then you can just come off here and make your marks and you line your little thing of a bob up basically. After we hollow the threads out of these, I'm just gonna set them up here and we'll get this piece cut out and I'm just gonna tack them and we'll just see if it freely goes. We need to modify it, so. I don't have any tubing, that's the only reason I'm doing it. If you had some 3 8 ID tubing, it'll just slip over that. You'd be golden, but I don't, so. We have a couple of these little half nuts and stuff and I'm just gonna, probably, I may just drill the centers out. I'll chuck them in the drill press and drill them out. All right, guys, here's our finished little sweeper. It actually goes like this. This goes back here at the stud, so. Yeah, you can see how to do that. You can, uh, like I said, you can leave this a little tighter if you want to. That's pretty good, I think. But haven't decided yet. I may do a little radius or I may do something like this. I don't know. We'll wait till we get it cut out. And uh, like I said, I'm probably gonna have to use a two inch hole saw because I don't have a two and a half. And uh, we'll just take a deburr grinder or something, get up in here and get as close as we can. Like I said, it's not a showpiece, it's just a tool, but it's a tool I think you need if you're going to do this type stuff. All right, what we're going to do is we're going to take our 3 8 uh, These are some old nylock nuts here that I got from Tractor Supply, I think. But these are 3 8 and they'll thread right on it. But what we're going to do is we're going to jump up to the next size, which is a 25 64s, and basically just drill the threads out where. They'll just float up and down like that. We're going to position them and uh, weld that piece of sheet metal to it, and it should turn like we want it to. Like I said, if I had a piece of tubing, I wouldn't have to do all this, but it's cheaper for me to drill these two nuts out than it is to run somewhere and buy some tubing. So it's what you get for being cheap. So we're going to get her as sheet fire and save matches. All right. We're going to get it as square as we can get it. Might grab me a 3 8 bolt here. That way we got something more to eyeball. Let's lock it down on the little drill vise. That's pretty close. Now we're going to poke a hole in it. Get a little earl here, a little rapid tap, put that in there. Lined up pretty good. This little harder is a grade eight bolt or nut. Just drill it slow, keep a little earl on it. Went to nylock. It's probably a little warm, so oh, but I can show you with this. See now, it'll just slide up and down through there instead of having to thread it. So that should work great right there. So I'm gonna get the other one done. These little drill vices right here are really nice to have. Help you keep from spinning around, throwing out your hand and all that stuff. I use my MIG pliers. Yeah, it turned out pretty good. Let's do that real quick. Get that good. Because what I do is I level these shoulders right here up on both sides. Just try to see, make sure we got it square. And just use the old eyeball on her. Use the old crooked eye, make sure she's good to go. And snug it. Earl it, fire in the hole. There she is. Oh, 
All right, let's get up here and try it. See how these work. Perfect. So basically, what we'll do is we'll just uh, come up here when we get our piece cut. And uh, I might put a little shim stock under this to keep it off of it a little bit, but I think it'll be good. We'll basically just take the wire welder and uh, kind of hard to do when I'm talking and stuff. And what is it? Zap, zap. And what we can do is we can make one for three inch or whatever, and then we'll just be able to pull it off. It don't need to be bolted down or nothing, but yeah, that's the fast way to do it. Take you a nut that fits this, next side drill bit up, ready to go. So what I got here is some, uh, I think it's 16 gauge sheet metal. And we're basically gonna put that on there and get her chopped out. All right, gonna get this thing marked out quick and go over on the karate chop machine and chop this thing off. You don't need a stomp shear, but if you can get one, get one. You can do this with cut off wheels or whatever, but after working for 20 or 30 some years without one, I've got one now, so I'm gonna use it. Now we're gonna give our, our lop off section. We're just going to line it up over there and karate chop it. And then I, I guess I'll do this section here. Is the that there for that? So this goes, this goes, this goes, that goes. down through this slot right here to line that up and give her a good kung fu chop. Let me get my leg up that high. Now we got it down to that. Now we're gonna do the rest of the stuff by hand. Yay! Hand tools. Alright, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run some spacers down. Granted, these don't have threads, so you can pull it right off. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna run some spacers down for these nuts. I'll show you real quick, then we'll take these off after we're finished. I just need something to kind of hold these up. So this one here will drop down right there. And that way when it's when it's up here, it's gonna put it up here where I, I need it to weld. And then we'll put our other one. So thread the little booger on this thing. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this one for a spacer and uh, put at the height. It's basically a height adjustment is what it is. So if I need this one up, I can move that one up. If I need this one down to where I want it to catch, you know, wherever you want it. It's basically, I'm gonna put this one upside down too to get some, a little better. So we just adjust this one down. So basically they're just height adjustments. So we can sit there, zap, zap, and then we'll slide this off. Time to eat a bean, we'll be back. All right, we're gonna chuck up this little, <clears throat> I was just gonna do the little zippy thing with the cutoff wheel, but I think I'm gonna use this uh, smaller hole saw just to get the bulk out of the way. And uh, be a little less work for us with the cutoff wheel. So we're gonna pop this unit out real quick and we'll start filleting her. I 
I'm just going to put the old eyeball on her, the old crooked eye, and see if I can get her close as I can to it. Let me flip this around where it's not in my way. Just get it up here somewhere. Looks like that's going to be good. Good old 20 volt kills over. So they've got nothing. I knew I should have used the plug in unit. <laughs> you believe that? Try to just do a little at a time. another one. Alright, I brought a couple more. We'll see if we can at least get through this 16 gauge sheet metal. Ain't that crazy? Yay! These things do cut really good. I like these in my Amazon affiliate link and uh do the other little things don't cost you guys any more extra it just uh helps the channel out a little bit on qualified purchases so yep now we're gonna get out the old wheel of death we're gonna suit up make sure you got some kind of face coverings because they call them wheel of death for a reason we're just gonna come up here and we're just gonna nip at it Ooh. red arc and spark about where she's gonna be about centered she's got just a little gap so we'll have room to mark all the way around I'm gonna put just a I may just trim this edge down here a little bit it's still hitting I'll trim that black off and we'll call that good I'll bring you back in there when we get ready to weld it we're set up get ready to weld so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this little piece of uh, 22 gauge on the bottom here and that's basically a spacer after we weld it I'll just pull it out I got my little little magnetic clamp I'll put that down to where it hits that where I'm gonna drop this down a little bit so I don't burn the corner off right there so that's what these are for that's just a spacer to hold this nut that slides right here we get that where we want it Try to get all this good and squared up. Stop it from spinning. Get her good and centered in there. See, I may need to trim just a little more off this edge so it'll pull it over some. All right, guys, well, there it is. We got everything situated. The gold nuts stay, the silver ones come off. And if you look around that, nothing's touching up there. It's uh, spaced off down there. We'll make sure we got her pushed down against that really good. That's good. We can open her up just to scotch. We'll pull this out. We're done. That thing should free spin. And uh, we're going to go get the mid gun, put a couple zap zaps on it, and uh, call it a day. Hey. 
good one. Don't do that. It don't work. So basically what it does if you need to cut i'll have to lay this out but like if you need to cut a 45 on that what you do is you pull it over 45 so i can hold this and do it at the same time and you do that there and then you pull her off of there whatever because we're going to come back i'm going to lay whatever 45 90 whatever that is sorry for my hand away figured out what it was i'm going to round this return a little bit more so it'll come off with the tube on there but basically you get the idea if you need to cut a 45 it gives you a, a good square cut all around but like i said the only problem with it being with this puck i like to put because it indexes it but you could take a, just a little piece of tape and run down through here or whatever but it cut it gives you a cut line all the way around to there so but yeah that's what you need so if you cut on that line there what i have to do is kind of pick up on it do that yeah looks like she's gonna work she will swing and it'll keep everything indexed a little puck right there and it'll do your 45s whatever yeah i think what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna i'm gonna square it because sometimes you'll have a longer one so there's no need in putting like a something here for a stop so i'm just gonna put a straight line there and that way you can get 90 off of that so yeah that was a pretty quick make there i think i'm gonna radius this off here just so i don't like sharp edges Gonna be a 45, a 90, and a 22 and a half, and maybe a 35. We'll just lay a couple out. I'll sand his own line off here so that don't matter. And there we go. But yeah, I think I'm gonna roll it, raise this just for some style points. So enough to take the out of there. May need, some, may need more than that. roll a little bit not get too fancy i can do that with the little air grinder i don't like sharp edges that you get cut on so.
All right, guys, I'm gonna show you real quick how to do your little uh, degree marks. Uh, probably a little easier if I hadn't stapled this to it, but I wanted to stay where it's at. And I got to use air tools, so you guys know it's fun to shoot like stuff really fast. But anyway, this is how I'm gonna do it. This is one of them old uh, cheapy angle finders from, uh, I think I got it at Harbor Freight. You just loosen it up, it's got your angles on it. So we're gonna do our 45 first. And all truthfulness, no more scientific than I am. I probably ain't going to use it. I'm not going to look under this thing and say, ooh, I need a 22.5 degree, but these are going to be good reference marks. So the easiest way I found to do this is I set this unit here on the 45. Make sure you do have a square line when you're building this. You should have this. And camera angle, I'm looking at it. This is actually lined up this, but it don't look like it on the camera. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to square that unit up right there, right on that line. And... You know, it'd be kind of hard to use the old crooked eye to get this down through here straight. So I just got a piece that I use that I plasma cut. You can use a square of any type. And I'm going to come out here to the end. I'm going to bump it right up to the edge of it. Try not to move it. And we're just going to put us a little dot right there. At that thing. I went and moved it. Don't move it. You get. I don't know why I'm trying to be so precise because I'm not that precise. All right, there we go. I'm going to come to the end of that thing and put a mark there. Stop moving. Put me a mark there and mark it to right at the edge of that square. And then I'm going to get me one of my 75 straight edges I got laying around. I'm a straight edge junkie, guys. I am always buying straight edges. I don't know why. But I go to Harbor Freight and I'll load a basket full of them. So we're going to come down through here. We're going to mark our little our line right there. I'm going to come back and use the old crooked eye again. Let's make sure we put near square. I'm just about to look down through there. And that is 45. So we're going to come up here and I'm just going to do my 45 with the little degree thing. And we're going to just... Take it, make sure it still sit on the 45. And uh, we'll just, well, I guess this one's got a double. Yeah, it's got the double size. We'll just go around here to this 45. Some of it don't have double size, just gotta flip them over, but we're gonna square that unit up right there. Get our little, our makeshift square here. A dot right there. Just barely go out and bump it. Dot right there. There are straight edge. I get me a shorter one because I'm gonna bump into the camera if I don't. Bump it up against there, get our two marks. Good thing about this wood, it sands off pretty easy. And I'm gonna, we're gonna use the old crooked eye here again to get our square. Yeah, it's pretty close. Close enough for type work I do. Don't forget to write on there your 45 degrees. All right, guys, hope this quick little video helped you guys out on how to make one of these cheap little marker utensil things so you can get the angle of the dangle on your exhaust because it can be a pain. And uh, we have several on patches here that I'm going to have to do some funky angles and stuff, and I think this will really help me on my cuts and stuff. But remember, be kind to one another. Jesus loves you, so do we. God bless. We gone.